Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and this is another video replay. Uh, and this time we're gonna do a combination of turn fighting and energy management video. Uh, kind of bring the two videos back together. Okay, same thing as before, still on a team. Um, we're still going to start getting into a little bit more team dynamics so you can actually start hearing some of the items that uh, you know my current teammates do when whenever we're actually playing some, some of the pub matches. Uh, I can tell you that what we do in uh, competition flying versus what we do in pub is completely different. So you can take it with two cents next time that I'm actually recording the audio from an actual match. Okay, uh, my teammates are flying a Spitfire 5 and two LA-5s, as you can see, not really anything crazy. And right at the beginning of the match, I guess we were talking about something really kind of funny, and I went crazy with a hat switch on my joystick. So, like always at the start of the battle, aggressive climbing, we're on a really small map, so altitude is key right away. Pretty aggressive map uh, climb. As you can see, this is 2,300 feet. I'm already almost to the point to stall, and I just put the nose down. It's specifically on this map. It's very important, especially if you have a high energy fighter or even a BNC, uh, BNC airplane like the LA-5. Although I consider this more of a hybrid aircraft. Um, we're gonna discuss a little bit more of the mixture of both, but I think the, mo the most important thing about uh, this particular uh, flight today is it's a combination of both, but um, but also target switching, which is very important in this game. Is how do you how do you distinguish which targets you should go for? As you, as we talked in previous uh, videos, the layer cake technique is very important. We want to make sure that nothing is high high or above you. Uh, with an LA-5, you have a little bit more of a altitude advantage, so you can actually hang with the uh, B and C aircraft. So you can see I'm target switching. I'm actually checking out the uh, the site itself. A lot of people like to fly very low on this map, but that does not necessarily mean that you should go ahead and drive, dive to the first target you see. So I see a target of opportunity here. Two airplanes are fixated into one airplane, but they are, they actually kill them. So I'm just going to throw some shots here and there. Now with the LA-5, you've got to be a little bit more careful with the aim. As you can see, not all of my shots are landing, although my reticle is right on top of the aircraft. As soon as I'm done with the uh, airplane, I go ahead and start a, a massive climb. I have an A6M2 and an LA-5, but as we can see before, when I was looking and scoping the place out, um, they were at very low altitudes. For them to actually catch up at this point is near impossible. So automatically, I start throttling back down to keep my energy as much as possible. I'm going to go ahead and engage the LA-5. I'm not worried about the hits yet. Um, because I still have plenty of energy so I can actually escape. Got plenty of health. The LA-5 is now above me. I'm going to do an aggressive climb. Always checking behind me. And this is where the turn fighting begins. So you can see he had a clear advantage over me. All I'm doing is maintaining energy, cycling some of that boost. That boost is still climbing. As you can see, this particular player had an advantage over me, but uh, I'll quickly turn it around in this case. So he did a mistake of overturning. I know that the, he still has a teammate, but looking at the minimap, but he's still no factor because he's really not on me yet. So yeah, quickly, here's the other target. I just go ahead and quickly look at him. I just, that was just a spur of the moment, switched the target. He was right in front of me, so it was an opportune moment to take him out. I was just one-on-one. -on -one. So you can see he made a mistake, stopped the turn. And he was trying to use the contours of the mountain at that point, but you know when you have two airplanes of the equal uh, turn radius, you do not do that. You want to continue the actual uh, turn fight. 
Now, the only time that you would actually stop the turn fight is if you're aggressively being picked on by another player. Or, you know, it might end up being an endless turn fight, but you got to consider that you still have teammates around you so they can save you. As far as the BSH2s, they're non... Uh, they're non... It's actually no trouble at all to take them down. My teammate is still alive. Um, he was engaged with the P51A earlier, but... Um, he was losing against AA, so he came back to me to support me. Um, but it was, you know, pretty straightforward. At this point, um, the match is going to slow down quite a bit, so we might be able to talk a little bit more about the items that uh, you're going to notice that I'm doing right now. Now, even though I'm on a turn fighter per se on LA5, you want to make sure that you're consistently climbing even after each engagement. Now, yes, this actually slows down to your aircraft, but remember the key of any type of engagement is energy. Um, maybe some people will say that I'm being a little bit scientific, but energy management is key. So you can see I got packet loss at this point. That was terrible. I see the P51A is trying to just survive at this point. He's really low. But I'm going to go ahead and boost up to his altitude. So you can see I'm only back down to 5, 3, 2, 1, and it's going to cut the boost now. Spread is too much. I'm definitely not going to catch him. So while we look at the airplane, still a 1,000 meters. He's going to start pulling away. It's a P-51A. So we know for a fact that the airplane is going to keep on turning away. But uh, as we know, he's traversing the map. Eventually, he's going to turn or hit the wall. So what you need to do at this point is to figure out, okay, which way is he going to turn? Now, as we can see, his flight path is probably going to be a right turn. So I start noticing and then I start cutting into where he, I think he's going to be appearing. So you can see now he's forced to turn. So I made a good judgment call. He's focused into my teammate who has lower health and I'm just going to go ahead and take him away. Easy. So, as we can say, as, as I said before, it's uh, it's an interesting dynamic as far as t target switching. Make sure that you're target switching when you have a furball. You're you're multiple switching between different aircraft, and make sure that that either one they're engaged, two if they're not engaged, are they going to focus to you, uh, and can he he can can he actually corral other uh, particular players? Um, again, if you have to, just do some damage. Pick them, you know, literally just pick them, shoot some uh, bullets to them, and actually climb out. Do not become an, an actual target yourself, especially if you're playing the altitude game. As you can saw, saw in the previous engagement, altitude was also key within this game. And this is with a Russian aircraft. Uh, there is really no reason for no aircraft to actually climb at the start of the game. Energy is your friend no matter what aircraft you're using. Uh, well, hopefully that should have given you a little more insight. Hopefully as the videos progress, we'll talk a little bit more about uh, team play and communications. But, you know, we'll keep on trying to build up as we uh, progress these videos. Again, thank you very much and you guys have a great one.